Hi, I'm Micah Woods. I really like to putt on greens where the ball rolls true, where it doesn't bounce and bobble and snake around too much. I like to do something called the bobble test at the same time that I'm using the stint meter to measure the green speed. The bobble test is a visual way to assess how smooth and true the ball roll is. Queen, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Queen. I'm uh, look after this golf course now. We've known each other for 25 years now since you were about in middle school. And, <laughs> and it's been great working with you in different countries with all kinds of sports turf and golf turf. Do you know what the bobble test is? Not yet. That's just a minute. About middle school, it's not right. <laughs> but anyway, okay, the other thing is okay. We meet for 25 years. Yes. I so, don't know anything about the bobble test. Queen, the bobble test is something that is really easy to do to measure something that golfers care about. Mm -hmm. Because golfers like fast greens, but they also like smooth greens, and they like to know that when they hit a putt, the ball is going to continue on the line where they've yeah. hit it. Okay. That makes sense, right? Yes. But usually, we've just measured the green speed and assumed that if the green speed is fast, that the roll must be true. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that sometimes you can have fast greens where the ball still bounces offline or yeah. chatters a bit. So I've found it really useful over the past few years to measure something called the bobble test mm -hmm. as a way to put a score. Yeah. Do you okay. want to, are you ready to learn? Yes, of course. Queen, there's an excellent article. Yeah. I printed this out because I wanted to show it to you and I'm gonna leave this with you at the end of today after I've shown you this. Mm -hmm. This is an article from the Green Section Record from 2010 or 2011 mm -hmm. and it's called Perfectly True by Richard Windows and Henry Bechelet. Mm -hmm. Two turf grass industry legends from the United Kingdom. Yeah. It defines what this smoothness scale is and the smoothness scale is from a scale of one to 10 yeah. where one would just be awful, the ball just bouncing around and 10 would be a perfect score yeah. where there's no chatter or snaking and a perfect roll. Mm -hmm. Do you, can you have that? Can you really have that? I only give that score if I'm absolutely certain that the roll is perfect mm -hmm. and the weather needs to be perfect too and it needs to be beautiful outside. I need to be having a really special feeling. Generally, I will give a score of nine when uh -huh. it's perfect. Uh -huh. And these things is nothing with the speed, right? It's just the, the ball roll only. Just like last time when you used to show me about the RNA uh, TrueNet test. Is it the same thing? No. The greens tester was about rolling the ball 10 times and measuring how many times it goes in. But the problem is and there's research that shows this too. The problem is you can have a green that's recently been cored. Uh -huh. And so the ball bounces around. Uh -huh. But what happens is the bounces even out. So even if the green's a little bit bumpy, the bounces that cause it to move to the right also even out with the bounces that cause it to go left. Uh -huh. So you can set up the greens tester and you can still make nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 on a green that any golfer who would look at it and watch how the ball rolls would say that's a terrible roll. Yes. And that's why I've moved away from doing the greens tester um, test, or which was called a reliability test or a holding out test to okay. measure the, reliabil uh, the reliability of the green. And instead, I much, much prefer to do this bobble test. Okay. Queen, with the bobble test, we're looking for three things. Okay. I'm going to define them to you and then then I will demonstrate. Mm -hmm. The first thing I look for is bobble. Mm -hmm. And what bobble is, is any vertical bounce, any bounce where I can see with my eyes that the ball leaves the ground. Okay. That's, that's yeah. easy. The second thing I look for is chatter. Mm -hmm. And that is the ball is moving up and down, mm -hmm. but I can't see that it leaves the ground. Okay. I don't see air between the green and the ball. That's it. 
And the third thing I look for, and this usually happens towards the end of the roll as the ball slows down, uh -huh. unless the green really has some problems. Uh -huh. The third thing that I look for is called snaking. And yes. what snaking is, is some movement to the right or the left that's unexpected. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Unexpected. Unexpected. Not, not, uh, not, not by the lights or yeah. anything, right? So if it breaks, that is, mm -hmm. um, if it breaks as expected, uh -huh. that, that, that is, is okay. That is okay. Uh -huh. okay. How nervous are you right now to learn the bobble test? Do you think you can do it? Yeah, I can do that. Too. You think you and I can come up with the same score? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Well, first, we're going to choose a good spot to do a stint meter test because a stint meter test to measure green speed is the same location on the green that at the same time I will measure the bobble test. Oh, I, will... I see. So you will do at the same, the same direction also? Yep, I will show okay. you. So let's, let's find a good spot to do a stint meter measurement. Where would you like to go? There. Like right here, here to here. It's okay? Yeah. All right, let me roll these the first time and I want you to watch how the ball rolls. Okay. Now, as you know, when the ball comes off the stint meter, it always bounces a little bit. Uh -huh. I, will, I will show in slow motion what that looks like and I, definitely don't count that as bobble. It's after the ball has settled down and starts rolling, which is going to be after it bounces here and then it starts rolling. That's what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna look for bobble, I'm gonna look for chatter, and I'm gonna look for snaking. Ooh, when it hit that sedge, it did a little bit of snaking. Yeah. This is a perfect green for the bobble test. Did you, <laughs> did you see any bobble? I did see it. I see the chatter. Yep, me too. So that's pretty good. That would be an eight. The first one was a seven or a six. Pretty good. Yeah. So, so the way that I would score that, the first one had a lot of chatter and snaking. Uh -huh. So I think there was enough there, I'm gonna give that a six. Uh -huh. The second one only had a little bit of chatter in just, just one spot, I'll give that an eight. Uh -huh. And the next one I'll give a seven. Seven, yeah. That's so, so I've just rolled three balls. Now it's, it's easy to just add those numbers together. Uh -huh. So we had six, Eight, and, Eight seven. and seven. So average is seven. Right. So I'm gonna say twenty-one, okay? Because ah, I'm I gonna see. I'm gonna put this into a computer later. Ah, I see. So instead of trying to calculate the average in my head, ah. I'm just gonna say that the total bobble score in that direction was twenty-one, uh -huh. and in the future I'm gonna divide that. Uh -huh. Okay. And the first one, uh, when when it hit the width, it have snake, right? It snaked. It, okay. it, it made a deviation to the side. Okay. We do in two directions, uh -huh. right? So so now we're going to do three more rolls and we're, especially if, if there's grain, if it's like into the grain and down grain, you'll see that going down grain, the bobble test yeah. score is really good. And then going back into the grain, if there's a lot of chatter and much more snaking, yeah. if there's grain on a green. Mm -hmm. And you can definitely notice these kind of things. So, but wait a second, before you do it, uh -huh. be before you do it, I want to talk about these scales just a little bit. Okay. So, if, if we see six, okay. six could have a single bobble event, it could have quite a bit of chatter, and it could have some snaking, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. And eight is going to be mostly smooth, 
with single isolated chatter events and minimal snaking. Mm -hmm. So for me, if you only have a single chatter event or a single snaking event, mm -hmm. it could be an eight. Mm -hmm. If you've got chatter and snaking, it's gonna be seven or below. Right. And once you get a bauble, even a single bauble, it's gonna be six. Uh -huh. Now, when you get multiple baubles, multiple bounces, Mm -hmm. It will be five or four or three, but for me that's unacceptable. I don't worry so much about the differentiation. Okay. What you'll find is most putting greens in this part of the world at least are going to be six or above. Maybe, okay. maybe the worst ones would be five. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when you're doing this just think about how, how how much of the roll is a smooth roll? Uh -huh. How many times does it snake? How many times does it bobble? How many times do you see chatter? Uh -huh. I see one bobble. Okay, so what scores do you want to get there? The first one is seven. The third one also seven. Yes. The middle one six. Okay, so that adds to twenty. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So what we've got now, I, and I agree with you, I might have gone seven, 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 you've mm -hmm. gone seven, six, seven. Mm -hmm. But even on the very first time doing this, it's not that difficult because everybody that works in this business knows what a bauble looks like. Mm -hmm. Once you tell them what it is, mm -hmm. what, what I want to call a bauble, you know what it is. Mm -hmm. Chatter, you know what it is and your eyes can see it. Mm -hmm. And snaking, you know what it is. There, there yeah. wasn't much snaking there. Yeah. It was just chatter, maybe one bauble. Mm -hmm. So we had 21 in this direction. Mm -hmm. We had. 20 in that direction, so we would write down the score of 41 uh -huh. or 20, 21, divide by 6, uh -huh. and that's going to be something like 6.8 6, yeah. or 6.9 for this particular place. Uh -huh. Now, at the same time, we've just measured the stint meter. Uh -huh. It didn't require any more time than the stint meter measurement does, it just requires more concentration because we have to look at each ball and just remember three numbers, yeah. seven, six, seven, uh -huh. or seven, eight, uh -huh. six, something like that. Uh -huh. I'm not gonna calculate the stint meter, but it's uh, something about nine feet, a little bit less than nine feet. Uh -huh. But this is about the bauble test, so I'm not, I'm not worried about okay. what the exact stint meter was. Do you have any questions? Yeah, normally, I mean that uh, if the, the surface is not that smooth, right? And you have a lot of scatter or you have a lot of bubble, it will lower the ball speed anyway, right? Usually. Right, so, so anyway, it has the relative between this one and the steep middle also. Yeah, there, there, there is, but it's not, it's not a perfect relationship. Uh -huh. In fact, I've been aware of this test for more than a decade. I, this article is from more than 10 years ago, uh -huh. and I read it and I thought it's too much trouble, and I don't need to do that because uh -huh. I trusted, uh -huh. I trusted that when I was using the stint meter, uh -huh. that it. The ball would only roll far and and get a, a fast stint meter speed if the green was smooth, smooth. and true. Uh -huh. I thought that. And so I said, I don't want to go to the trouble of doing this uh -huh. because for a lot of things, I never want to go to the trouble of doing it uh -huh. until at a course in Thailand about three or four years ago, I was measuring the green speed almost 11 and it was on a Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass green and the green speed was almost 11 and everybody was pleased with the green speed. But when I watched the ball roll, it was, it was chattering and snaking 
constantly. Mm -hmm. And I thought there's something missing here. The, the superintendent and the maintenance staff and whoever's deciding how to maintain these greens are doing it to achieve the speed and they're checking off that they've achieved the speed that they want. But some, somewhere there was a breakdown because somebody wasn't looking at how the ball was rolling. And I talked to the pro and he said he couldn't quite put a description to it, but he just felt that there was something wrong with the greens. They weren't as good as they used to be. And that's when I decided, you know, if we would just measure the bauble test together with this and encourage people to measure the bauble test too, then we could really assess what the smoothness and trueness are. So it means that if you get the good ball speed but not true, it's even worse than than the low speed and yeah, I, the true, I, right? I think so. As a golfer, I would much rather putt on true greens. Uh -huh. I would much rather putt on true greens and know that if I just hit at the right pace, the ball will go in. Uh -huh. yeah. Instead of on fast greens where the what yeah. happens is unpredictable. Because I, if it's fast and it snap a little bit, it can go anywhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that gets in your head. Yeah. It gets in your head. That's like Poa Annua greens in California or in the western United States in the springtime and there's uh, afternoon seed heads come up and it gets in golfers heads uh -huh. that um, and sometimes those greens can get a little bit soft with footprints so by the end of the day the ball can snake a little bit uh -huh. and uh, golfers struggle with it because they don't trust that the ball will roll well and they start making excuses so I just think for all the work that's done on putting greens uh -huh. for all of the the hand mowing and the careful top dressing and the care with fixing ball marks and pulling out weeds and, and just doing everything, we might as well measure not only the speed but the trueness. Yes. Okay, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's Good. nice. Yeah. Another thing I like to use the bobble test for, and you mentioned, is it correlated with the stint meter? Yeah. So if we get a fast stint meter speed, uh -huh. is that going to be also a good bobble score? Uh huh. And it is, but I like to measure the quality of the ball roll all through the year. Uh huh. And what a lot of people will do when they're maintaining greens. When, when they know the greens are bad, like it's just been core aerified, it's just been top dressed, they don't bother going to measure the stint meter speed, do uh -huh, they? Uh -huh. they? They'll only measure the speed when it's like you've got a tournament coming yes. up or you know the greens are good. But from a customer perspective and from a management perspective, it would be better to have the greens rolling really good for the maximum number of days in the year. Uh -huh. And so what you can do is when you do have to do these type of disruptive maintenance practices like pouring uh -huh. or sand top dressing or grade in or something, anything that would mess up the greens, you can measure the bauble test uh -huh. and you can measure how many days before, it's come back. before it comes back. And that is a way to find out maybe if you put a little bit of extra fertilizer uh -huh. or maybe if you use a different time size uh -huh. or maybe if you put the sand top dressing first and then you do a solid time instead uh -huh. of coring. The different ways that you can do this, the different ways of brushing in the sand or blowing in the sand or no sand at all. Uh -huh. All of these things, it's an opportunity to make it better the next time. Uh -huh. And that's where I think the stint meter Nobody bought, who cares what the stint meter speed is when the greens are covered in sand. Uh -huh. But if you measure the bauble test score, you can start to say, wow, when we did that, we messed up the greens. The greens were perfect. Uh -huh. And then we did this work and they were messed up for 21 days. days. And then you can say, okay, next time, what can we do differently so that the greens can be rolling through in a shorter time? In a shorter time. Oh, that one had a snake. And that, I saw a bauble right there, too. <laughs> yeah. Queen, this is the greens tester. And about 
10 years ago, yeah. maybe, maybe 13 years ago, something like that. I was even making videos about this and I thought this was the best thing possible because it measures the result of what we're really trying to do with golf, which is get the ball in the hole. Mm -hmm. So I thought because the greens tester is measuring what really happens if the ball goes in the hole or not, which is the objective of golf, I thought it was perfect. Mm -hmm. But what I started noticing is when we set this up to do the test on greens like this one that we could say are not a perfect roll. Mm -hmm. Because when I hit the putts there, we saw snaking, we saw chatter, we saw bobble. Mm -hmm. And so as a golfer, when we look at it, we would say the greens are not perfect. Mm -hmm. But the problem is I started noticing 10 years ago when I was doing the, the, um, the green tester, the holding out test with the green tester, that we could set this up and it, it would still make nine or 10 out of 10 on greens that weren't perfect because when you have snaking, it evens out. Mm -hmm. When you have chatter, it doesn't knock it offline. So let me show you how this works. We'll try to get it so, so it's set up so the ball will go in. So we'll, we can adjust this so it will roll the proper distance. Mm -hmm. That's not quite fast enough, so we'll bring this we'll bring this up. The other issue we have with the uh, the greens tester is we get the tracking effect. Yeah. I don't think this is so pronounced on warm season grasses, but on some cool season grasses you could get a tracking effect where the ball just rolls a little bit farther mm -hmm. when it's rolled in the same line time after time. That's going a little bit too fast. Mm -hmm. So I want it to go a little bit slower when it drops into the hole. Okay, that snaked, but it still went in. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get it a little bit slower. Okay, there was a nice little chatter and bobble. Okay. So we can see there's some imperfections in this roll. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I've almost got it set up the way I want it. But I'll see if I can demonstrate for you why at first I liked this, but then I realized there's too many balls that have a bad roll and they still go they in. Still go. And that's why it seems counterintuitive that a visual test where we're just saying it looks like a seven to me, it looks like a six to me, it seemed counterintuitive that that would be more accurate, but it, that more accurately matches what the golfers see. It matches what I see, and our eyes are so accurate. Our eyes are really, really good to be able to detect these kind of things. And so I'm going to just make it go a little bit faster than it did that last time. And let's see, I've got six balls here. I think this is set up pretty good. Okay, one. One out of one. That, had, that chattered, yeah. maybe even bobble, and it just goes right in. Yeah. There's That's two out of two. Chatter all through the roll. Three out of three. Four out of four. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys can see this on the video, but what we're looking at is the ball just keeps going in the hole, but if we look at how it's rolling across yeah. the surface, we would say, there's a flaw in it. Yeah. And that's why I found that I prefer the bobble test. Now, some people will say, what about, there's a, um, the SCRI had something that they called the trueness meter, I think, which was a complicated device mm -hmm. that, that you push across the green. And there's the Perry meter, which is a really cool device that puts a, iPhone into a buggy and then that goes across the surface mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or a cart. I mean, I mean it's I, I don't know it, it puts in a tray yeah, with I wheels see. and it goes across the surface and people love those kind of things because it it puts a quantitative number to it instead of letting our eyes decide. Yeah. But those have their flaws too. 
because the problem is you could go run the perimeter across a fairway yeah which is a terrible putting surface uh-huh but, but be it's still because it's so soft the ball doesn't the ball doesn't chatter uh -huh, so much and it doesn't it. snake so much uh -huh. because it's rolling through soft grass uh -huh. and then you come on the green and it, it records a worse score than the fairway and you say how can I interpret these numbers uh -huh. and that's why I I encourage people to just try the bobble test uh -huh. once I tried it I realized you know what this is reproducible it's it's really good and it matches what the golfers see and you don't need any extra equipment and you're probably measuring them with the stint meter anyway uh -huh. just pay attention to how the balls roll put a number to it and now you can do all kinds of things uh -huh. Uh -huh. and you can even even if the greens aren't at the speed that you might like if the ball's rolling true you can say look we've got a perfect roll what more do you want yeah. And, and I really like the idea of when we do have to disrupt the surface by cultivation, by scarification mm -hmm. or, any, or sand top dressing, we can measure the duration and the intensity of the disruption. Mm -hmm. I see. Did I persuade you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Just like, just like this, this grid, we just top dress, right? And we can see it easily how how it's this rock with that. There we miss one. See if the wind changes, another thing with the greens tester is when the wind changes after you've got it set up, mm -hmm. that will also change whether it goes in or not. But with our eyes, we're just assessing the quality of the roll. Mm -hmm. All right, Queen, it has been so great to teach you about how to do the bobble test. I hope we can do this again sometime. Yeah, thank you very much. I learned a lot. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> wow, your birdie dance. <laughs>